back here on the John 4K Show, and us. it's our special spotlight segment where we take a look at some of the top players in the college ranks fixing to hit into the NFL real quickly. And right now, the hottest quarterback in college football is right up the road at Memphis in Paxton Lynch, a big six foot six and a half, 245 pound, completing almost 70% of his passes. John, he's thrown for almost 3,500 yards, 21 touchdowns, only three pass interceptions. We got to see him real early in the season, and just because of that big arm he's got, also, man, he's a big, tall drink of water. He can run for a big man. Now, I think he's been banged up a little bit the past couple weeks. He got rolled over a little bit on his knee. He hasn't quite run the same, but he's actually, along with Fuente, kind of put that program back on the football map. It had been a long time since we had talked about Memphis being a very successful team. But Paxton Lynch was a middle-range recruit coming mm -hmm. out of the Florida. My thing is, how do you come out of there with Miami of Florida and Florida in the situation that they are in quarterback-wise? How did you get out of there to go to Memphis? Probably someone looked at him and said, you know, you're going to be a tight end. And I'm sure they say, hey, we'll move you a tight end, play a different position. He probably wanted to play quarterback. Memphis came across, hey, you know, we'll, we'll let you play quarterback, see how it goes from there. But, you know, his biggest win is against Ole Miss early this season. Right. And that's when, when I got to watch him. Uh, play a lot more. I've seen him in a couple of games, but uh, I'm impressed at the way the young man can play. I mean, he's six foot seven. You're right, Mike. He runs. He's well, not afraid to man, run the football. He runs they run like a, a receiver. They run options with him. They run you know lead 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 quarterback leads on on him carrying the football. Uh, I don't know what happened in the last three football games. They look really bad against Navy. Uh, Temple put it to them. They had a chance to beat the Houston, Houston. team. Uh, just the way that these guys have played this year, uh, he's a top-notch quarterback. He will be playing on Sunday. There's no doubt about it. Big six-foot-seven kid who can run. I think if anybody knocks out the Ole Miss guys from being the top picks next year, being either Tunsil or Camducci, I think it may well be Paxton Lynch because of the, just the, the nature of the position, mm -hmm. the quarterback spot. Every you got probably 14 teams looking for a starting quarterback in the NFL. And, man, I look at some of the uh, starters in college football, and you wonder, man, that's what you got left? I think Paxton Lynch could well be the top overall pick in 2016 if he declares early. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The, the quarterback uh, in college football these days, Mike, and it's all because of these offenses they're running. They get these guys running this spread, running around. I think one of the next best quarterbacks, and, you know, hear me on this one, you probably agree with it, I think the young kid from Baylor, who's the freshman, I love the way he's playing yep. football, but this kid right here, Lynch, is going to have his golden opportunity. If he's not the first quarterback picked, he's going to be probably one of the top two quarterbacks picked, and he will be a high draft pick. Uh, this coming uh, Saturday when Texas A&M plays uh, LSU, you'll get to see one of the top offensive linemen in college football, Jermaine Afidi, coming from a school. John, he's 6'6", he's 330 pounds. He has started the last 34 games for Texas A&M. Uh, he's a guy that has started left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle. Man, you give me that type of yeah. versatility on a big man, and Jermaine's a guy that I think could well end up being a first-round pick. Well, I look at him, it looks like, you know, they, he's the kind of guy that they know what they're getting. Hey, I can play you at all four spots other than center, and who knows, maybe he can snap. But when you got a guy like that that's very versatile, people are going to sit there and say from a standpoint, well, we got to pick this young man because he can play inside, he can play outside. Uh, he's a big man, 6'6", 230 pounds, uh, and, and they throw the football at A&M, and they try to run a football, but they got that kind of offense where you got linemen, because A&M has produced some offensive linemen over the last you know, 10 years for sure. We know the Matthews brothers. And, 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 uh, and, Luke Jokel yeah, come Jokel. out of there. And you think about it, Mike Sherman was the guy that first started that right. when he was the head coach, and what did he coach? in the pros, offensive, offensive line, line. Right. and it, it has continued that. But Jermaine Afidi is a guy that I, I think is going to probably end up being a first-round pick, not only because of his versatility, also talking about a six foot six, 330-pound guy that can move around real well. He was also an outstanding basketball player in high school, so you can see the athleticism in that guy. Well, play basketball, you should be able to play both guards, both tackles positions, and he's kind of the guy that you look around and say, look, here's my leader on the offensive side of football. And you look the way – LSU has played defensively the last three football games. You know A&M right now is looking at chops. They might want to just say, we're going to run right behind him and then we'll take our chances with him. Man, and if I'm LSU, I'm running right at A&M's defensive line. They got those two guys that can come off the edge, but they don't stop the run right. well at all. I don't care who's coaching them. You know one thing, this will probably be a big game for Leonard Fournette, and I think LSU goes all out to win that last one for less miles. And uh, last week, uh, I really <laughs> – 
man, I got suckered into this. I, I picked Tulane to win. They were one in nine football team SMU, and they got absolutely beat down. 49-21, the score doesn't even indicate how bad this game was, John. SMU over 500 yards of total offense. SMU was 10 of 15 on third down plays. And again, they, they scored late to kind of put a, l- a little bit better on the scoreboard. That was a real embarrassing game. And I wonder now today, and we talk a little bit about the LSU situation, that's going to be a new athletic director at Tulane very quickly. I think Curtis is not on, on the strongest ground either. Right. At Tulane, when you got a new AD coming in here, and, and that was a real embarrassment to lose to, to SMU in the manner in which they lost it. Well, not just that. They run on the field with the flag turned upside down and to honor one of their players, former player. And Devin Walker. Uh, Devin yeah. Walker. And that's a shame. They can't, you know, he's number 18 ahead of the 81. That's a shame. That's embarrassing. But look, let's look at this whole program. They get the same problem LSU has. They have no quarterback. As much as they want to try to force Tanner Lee down your throat saying he's the answer at Tulane, he's not, folks. Your offensive philosophy is not that answer the, at Tulane. And I think Curtis Johnson is on the bubble right now. And with a new AD coming in, like we had talked about earlier in the show, Mike, a new AD coming in wants his guy. He don't want to start yeah, out because why bring sure. a new AD in and then after one year keep a guy and maybe you know you go the same thing next year, three and nine or four and eight or whatever your, your schedule is, whatever it may be, you fire a guy after one year. You're best clean house now. You know, another thing, too, is just like LSU, it comes down to also money. You know, people with some influence saying, you know what, we got to make this change. And I think Curtis, you know, he's tried. Yes. And he certainly hit the recruiting trails hard here, but it's difficult. It's shown how difficult it is to win at Tulane without some backing. And right now, uh, I'm not sure how strong a backing they have from the top level. I totally agree with you, Ed, Mike. And so we'll see what Tulane, they play this coming Friday against Tulsa. That won't, that won't be an easy game either. We'll be back with more of the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Forum.